The second or third course, um, students, I mean the trainees wanted to uh, to see one colonoscopy. So we had a video which we showed and then we thought, why show a video and we can do live. So Paul is going to demonstrate um, a colonoscopy. This is not a teaching thing, so I expect him to finish um, in time. Uh, if obviously there are difficulties in between, then he will show us how he handles it. It's just going to reinforce what we have been teaching you on the mannequin. Okay? You can ask him in between because there is a two-way communication here. And uh, <coughs> after this, we will be uh, asking two of the hands-on people to go there to the endoscopy suite and start uh, uh, the hands-on uh, real-life colonoscopy. Paul? Hello. Yeah, um, just quickly, why are we doing this colonoscopy? I'll hand over to my young friend. Okay. All right, uh, this is a 56-year-old gentleman uh, with no known comorbids, presented with history of lower abdominal pain for six months, altered bowel habits, and weight loss for the last four months. Uh, he has a history of pulmonary TB in his uh, family. Uh, ultrasound shows dilated bowel loops and right iliac fossa, where a CT scan shows tiny mesenteric lymph nodes, largest one measuring one centimeter. So we are kind of suspecting ileocecal TB. Okay, great. Any questions or indications? Okay. Uh, my friend, what's that for? Oh, chill. No, I don't want that. I don't want that. Chill. Well, so I'm going to examine your bottom. Some very cold jelly. Very cold. Well done. Please. Uh, just pop the tube in. No, you. Uh, I need to have uh, uh, Paul. Hello. It, it will give you a few minutes to also just uh, show us the scope guide if you can. Although I don't want you. I mean, if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. But uh, somewhere in between, or whenever you have a chance, you can just show the scope guide because most, I'm sure, have not seen it. Okay. So hopefully you've got the quad image up on there. Do you do quad image? We, ha we have you as well as the endoscopic Im uh, image at the moment. Okay. So what we do is that scope gone in. Lights on. Lights on. So I retrovert at the beginning. Interesting. Oh I do it at the end. Yeah. Well, as I say to people, do you like to kiss goodnight or slap goodnight? And I always like to kiss goodnight. <laughs> so, as we were talking before about big wheel back, can you see how the fold just bulbs forward and then tip up? As it comes back, then you just advance a centimeter. The little wheel, neutral, if you look at the scope. Let the scope go forward and then apply a clockwise torque, then draw the scope back, anti-clockwise torque as you come back. If you look at the scope guide, when it's going brown... It's we can't going see the scope guide. Oh, okay. Then. Just one second. Ask them to just put the camera. Uh, so the scope guy needs to come closer to him because it's guessing at the moment. Eric, yes, sir. scope guide needs to come in closer to Eric, the Eric, huh, that we can see the scope guide now. Right. Can you see how the scope guide has got a gray, a brown bit, a brown piece? Now it's all gray. Now it's gone brown. Where it's gray, it knows where it is. Now the scope itself. I uh, don't know how technical you want me to be, it's got numerous rings around it every few centimeters, every few millimeters. Those rings, three times a second, send a magnetic signal to the receiver dish. And that's why it gives a real-time image. And so when you move the scope, it sometimes moves a little bit jerkily, but it will actually give a real-time image. So what you've got is it gives you a perception of depth by the density of the gray color. So where it's lighter, it's actually further away, so that means it's going posteriorly to the, to the actual dish that's receiving the image. I don't know if you can see the image, see, see the dish itself. Now, if you notice there, I did an anti-clockwise and then draw back. So each time I go around the bend, I then advance and then I draw back. So we're going forward now, just advancing nice and steadily, patient, reasonably comfortable. But if you go on the scope guide, you wouldn't want to keep going. Keep coming back and now go forward. 
We don't have to come back too far. Then go forward, go forward, go forward, stop, draw back. Keep it coming back, clockwise torque, and then down. If you notice my left hand, my left hand has got the buttons now pointing away from me. As we come to this point here, now we're just coming into the descending colon. Feet are actually comfortable at the moment, so that tells me the patient is comfortable. If you look at what I'm doing now, I'm drawing back, keeping a clockwise torque, and making sure the tip is looking down the lumen. As I draw back the scope, anti-clockwise, and then keep it there, till it comes back to a point where I want to actually advance. I'm now advancing, advancing, Because advancing. obviously you've got a loop. You've got a loop, but the patient is actually, I can tell they're comfortable because of the toes. I don't have to ask them, but if the, the first thing to actually say I'm not comfortable is how the toes will actually lift up or the foot will actually push down. Just pause there, Paul, and let me just, just tell them a couple of things you've mentioned. The voices are not, not as clear. What he's saying is that the f when, when the patient starts feeling uncomfortable, you will, the first thing they do is move the toes. So when your patient moves their toe, they start feeling uncomfortable. The, s the, the sound and everything else of, of, of uh, pain comes very late. So you keep an eye. The moment your uh, patient starts uh, moving their toes or, or feet, it means that they are uncomfortable. So it's giving you a message that something is not right there. You need to tackle that. That's one thing he said. The other thing he said was that this scope guide which we just saw, so if it is gray in color, it's telling you real time. So that means you're, you, it, when it's brownish in color or greenish brown in color, as you can see there, it's actually guessing that path. It's not clearly showing, but because it's attaching those two areas, it's showing that. And, uh, okay, Paul, sorry. So, I, I, if I, we believe my young friend earlier, who was actually alpha loop, yeah. beta loop, gamma loop, and all those type of loops, if you looked at the scope guide, you could see that it's got some kind of end loop. So if we draw back the scope and then put an anti-clockwise torque in, I was actually going to draw back at that point anyway. So we keep coming back, keep coming back. Now you can see the scope. I'm not ignoring the scope guide. I'm talking about the image. Back a centimetre, forward a centimetre. Back a centimetre, forward a centimetre. That tells me no loop. Look at scope guide. That now is straight. So back a centimetre, forward a centimetre, and again the same again. Can you see how the folds are all converging here? Now when they converge, I want to go under and clockwise, and then up. So that's when we do chin up. So you've gone this and this. And then advance. Clean your lens. Now draw back. So all I've done is just go forward and then back. Now this is roughly where the splenic was, where we were moving the patient or moving the mannequin. Now, by all accounts, we should put the patient on the right-hand side. But as I've said to you before, that was a mannequin. So what we're doing now is, is that we're just advancing. He again appears a little bit comfortable, but I'm looking at his eyes, and I'm looking at his eyebrows. So he's not screwing his face up, but he, you know, he's looking okay. So did you notice what I did there? Anti-clockwise torque. And now I'm going to do a clockwise torque. Neutralize the scope. And the first thing I'm going to do once I see the lumen is draw back. And there's the lumen again. As you draw back, you can then advance. Tip up, and guess what I'm going to do? Draw back. Draw back, draw back, draw back. Suck. And that's not suck to hold. That's rubbish. What it is is actually to collapse the bowel so you can actually advance safely. Okay, Paul, just hold, oh, just, just stop there. there. Freeze. So what he's saying is that he is he goes forward and then pulls back. That way you keep the scope straight and shortened all the time. And like he just showed, if he hadn't been careful and slow, you could have easily created another problem there. But when you pull back, you saw the lumen and then you move forward. When you move forward, you pull back your scope, making sure there's no extra scope and keeping straight. When you have reached that, the transverse colon, as we saw, you suck the air out. But suck the air out does not mean you bring the lumen into the scope. Sucking is just deflating the colon. Enough so that it doesn't give you resistance and it also brings it closer to you. That way you move forward. So forward movement is forward, pulling back, forward, pulling back, taking air out. Correct? Yep. Thank you. So.
Now we just get the scope. If you notice there, if you put the scope here, now this is the thing you guys have been trying to show. Hilt, right, left. We, we can't see the scope, so yeah, that's better. Right, left. The next thing to do, there's the lumen. I look right, I look left, and the scope will go whichever way you point. So, I don't want to look right, I want to look at my monitor. And for that, your scope has to be straight. Yes. If the scope is not straight, this thing will not happen. So you're actually doing clock and anti-clockwise movement yeah. without using your hands at all. Now, if you remember you what I was saying about bringing the scope anteriorly. So I've now brought the apex of the loop. If you look at scope guide, you'll see, the, scope guide? Yeah, you'll you. see the apex of the loop has come anteriorly. Can you see it? What that means is, is now I'm not going under the spleen, I'm coming towards the abdomen wall, abdominal wall. So that means it's safe now to proceed with the scope. Draw back and then go forward with the scope. We're roughly now coming to where we want to be. Where's that in front of us? So we've got a thing to the left. Now I always say to people, we've got something in front of us, it may or may not be where we want to be. Now, Technically, you always get jumping up and down. That's the ileocecal valve on the left, but if we actually look at this person's anus, which I'm not going to allow you to see, but what I can guarantee you is that this scope is at 55 centimeters. Okay, so everybody starts to go, wow, 55 centimeters. But that means nothing, because now you've got to get into the cecal pole. And you end up putting a little bit more in. And now draw back, draw back. Now sometimes when it doesn't drop in, and if you gain your look, you can see now no longer 55, we're back to 60. Keep drawing back, keep drawing back, and now keep the torque on. If this doesn't go this time, the best thing to do for this patient is to put him on his back. So onto his back. Did you understand that? Yes. Sir. Okay, so when you've reached the cecum, uh, you see the ileocecal valve, but you can't actually get into the cecal pole. You pull back the scope. There you go. Take Take the air out, again go back in, applying a clockwise torque. You can't get in, pull back again, ask the patient to go back on their back. And that's this, that okay. straightens the thing okay. and quite often just allows you to get in. So these three maneuvers will almost always get you into the cecum, uh, which sometimes you'll see. Uh, there we there go. you go. There you go. And now what we'll do, we'll do a bit of a wash. No, 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 he says. See, I've got my foot over the wash. Ready to go? Eric went for his breakfast or his dinner or his tea. <laughs> Thank you. Go on, stand on it. Be there. Go on. That's far enough. Brilliant. Lovely. Not a check, no? But I see it. Wonderful. Now what you've got to see is is that Eric, yes. is that little wheel? Is that neutral? Yes. Eric, yes. the little wheel, is it neutral? Yes. So he's got to hear you. Neutral, sir. So what I'm going to show you is that. So there's the little wheel. So we've got round and I haven't touched the little wheel at all. Yes. Please, if you don't mind. So Eric says wash and we wash. Keep going Eric. So, there we go. So you can see the, ileus, uh, the pendicular orifice there. So now we just right. come back two centimeters and now we just do sm slowly anti-clockwise torque. Fold, although I don't pay much attention to the fold. I want to see the ventricular orifice or the ileocecal valve and I ideally want to get into the terminal ileum. And then we just go here. Now if you watch the left hand, the left hand's pointing the buttons to the floor. Big wheel comes back, big wheel goes forward. We can't see it, but I mean, you oh. know, what's happening here is... We want an empty block. Trying to get into the ileocecal valve, right? Yeah. So he wants an empty block. So I'll wait. And there we go.
Yeah, just wash away, my friend. Load of water. So you're... Uh, Lots of water. Go on. You're back in rectum. Uh, I'm in the rectum now, man. Water. He presses it and then takes his foot. Can you show us some villi? That's what I was trying to do, but Eric keeps taking his foot off the pedal. Uh, it's Eric's fault. Eric, press the pedal. Press. Yeah, you can see it's some. Okay. Is that you it? Can see some. Yeah, you can see some. It's good enough. So we believe you're in terminal island. It's uh, okay. I was coming out of his mouth, man. So the ileocecal valve is absolutely normal in this patient. Absolutely. It's a nice ileocecal valve. And I always like that picture, get them all, all three components, all three. So back to the room, what is all three components I've got in that one image? What, all three components that you can see of cecum in this, in this one picture. Anybody? Kya kya dikh raha isme? Teen nishaniya cecum ki. Cecum aapko bata rahi ke mein cecum mein hoon, kya kya dikh raha hai? What can you see that tells you you are in the cecum? Come on guys. Ileocecal valve on the left of the screen at about uh, 10 o'clock, something like that. And then you can see, you can see a little opening there. You can see the appendicular orifice and you can see the triradiate folds as well. Excellent. So then now, as we come back, if you look, the right hand is here. Out. Out, please. So the right hand is kept clear. This hand now, all this does is support the scope. Can you see how this is looking? So we've got the scope here. Scope now, I'm not holding the scope. The scope is in the palm of the hand. As the palm of the hand comes back, the left hand goes to the floor. See how that's shiny from the left? I steer the clear away from the shiny and back to the dark. Shiny now from down here. I steer clear away from that, back to the dark. Go into the bit I've not seen, tip up, come back shiny, I steer away, I come forward, tip up, and again, tip up, come back. Now, paying a lot of attention because of what the scan said about the ascending colon, something could be hidden behind the fold, you never know. So just go forward. So it's a good demonstration that you know why you're doing a colonoscopy. Here there was a suspicion of a possibility of tuberculosis or something in the right colon. So you're going to spend most of your time in the right colon making Absolutely. sure you don't miss anything. Absolutely. Okay, so if you're going to go for TB and you know there I don't think anybody would criticize you if you find um, ulcerated ileocecal valve and you do biopsy in a young man and not, not waste too much time looking at the rest of the colon just the, no, I don't think anybody would keep criticize. So, so if you're doing a screening colonoscopy, the attitude towards colonoscopy and, and the time you spend looking at every bit of colon is different. Doing a colonoscopy in someone who is young, who is suspected to have TB, is obviously going to be different. So with the indication the way it was, and now we're back to approximately, if we believe, scope guide, which is completely... Just English. have a look at the scope guide, please. So the scope guide is still looking at as you just come around the hepatic fletcher. Can you see? So the shape it's got is there looking at the hepatic fletcher. See the left hand? Left hand down now. Straight. I'm not actually gripping the scope. The only thing I'm holding is the wheel. So I'm not actually gripping the scope. The right hand is not gripping the scope. You don't have to grip the scope. You guys, I'm going to say, hold the scope properly. But what I'm trying to show you is, to do this... What, what he's trying to demonstrate is that as you're coming out, you really don't have to even hold the scope. You can, you know, just by using the clock and anti-clockwise talking gently and pulling back your scope and just holding it in one place, you can actually see it. But I think, you know, obviously, this is just a demonstration of if your scope is straight and you know the technique, you can do this. If you hold the scope and bring it out, I think at your stage would be much more sensible. As you've seen a segment, you obviously take air out and then have a look at the segment. Once you've seen it, as you get out, you just deflate it. That keeps the air low and less air and obviously less discomfort to the patient. How do you give pain to the patient? What causes pain in colonoscopy? Stretching. 
How do you stretch? By air and by scope. How's he doing? Yes, Paul. Oh, okay. Push Uh, and then go back. Can you see how the scope is held gently? And then you can go back in. I don't have to force the scope in. Hand down, tip up, tip down. Blow water. All I'm doing is just blowing a little bit of water, just dilute that area there. Stool looks a lot of stool when the absence of air, when there's a small amount of it. So I can always make it look like there's a lot of stool. Don't overdiagnose. Somebody could turn around and say that's a diverticular. Okay, it may be a diverticular, but what's the point in mentioning it? You know, it's got no bearing on what we're trying to exclude here, and it's of absolute you clinical insignificance. Also, when you've used um, phosphate-based bowel preps, quite often you would see small, very tiny apthes, uh, especially in the distal colon, left side rectum. You'll see a few, and um, you know that's not inflammation. That that's prep related, and it's very different from from anything else. Um, you know, if you're not sure, biopsying is, is never harmful. But um, but once you've seen enough, you'd know that this is nothing to worry about. It's like the stomach. You know, everybody gets gastritis. So we know where we've retroverted. Can you see? Yes, so that's doc. Uh, that uh, Paul Egan has been here signed. And that's, I've kissed him goodnight. <laughs> Normal. Okay, thank you, Paul. That was really good. Thank you. So now uh, we'll send two of the hands-on candidates. Can somebody tell me from there uh, who are they going to be so I can send the two? And then we start uh, 